All right, I'm back. I ran out of uh, storage space on my iPad. <laughs> I have two iPads, one for making videos and one for everything else, you know, storing all my apps on and all that. And I forgot to switch them. So I just deleted a bunch of crap I never use, and hopefully this video won't shut off. And uh, Bigga 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 decided to join me here. He's going to help me make this video. This is one of five of my kids. This is my oldest guy. His name is Big Boy. He just showed up one day and he said, I live here now. Let's get ready with the food, right? He's my buddy. Yeah. Okay, let's see. I was talking about frames. Um, one thing I want to mention, I am not the end-all be-all of, like, model trucks. I greatly appreciate when you guys say you really like my videos. That's why I do them. That's what makes me feel good is if I can help somebody. But... I don't want anybody thinking that I think I'm like the god of model trucks. I'm not. I'm far from it. There's many builders out there way better than me. Um, I just like to share from my knowledge. I'm a master mechanic, electrician, carpenter, uh, roofer, painter. I've done it all. And I like to put that into my builds. And if I have knowledge of something, I like to share it with people. Because if I can help you build a better model, it, it makes me feel good, you know. Some of y'all's builds are just friggin' awesome. Something else I want to mention. If you ever see me and, like, I point out something to you on your model, please don't think I'm being that guy, you know. Oh, what is that? You know, you did that wrong. I'm not like that. What I'm thinking or saying is I think your model is great but this one tiny thing is kind of distracting from it being perfect like the other day I saw a really really nice build and the builder used the kit fuel tanks and left the seam on them and real fuel tanks do not have seams um, I know it's a pain to fill them you know, sand them and all that crap. I hate doing it. But it it's distracting from your build. You know, it's like everybody's going to notice it. And especially people that know real trucks. They're going to say, why does it have that big seam on the fuel tank? Real tanks don't have that. Tanks are only part of it. The one that really gets me is when you have a really nice build and you turn it over and you have a seam going down the middle of your oil pan through your transmission the kit manufacturers were stupid to do it that way luckily AMT a lot of them they have a separate pan so it hides the seam but as you can see I filled in the seam on the transmission I think I did yeah Fill it in, sand it. It just distracts, guys. It's a pain. I hate doing it. But it makes it look so much better. You know? I don't know if you can see. It looks like it's one piece of cast iron. Instead of two halves together. I think I need to go back and touch it up a little bit. Right, right there. But, uh, that's something I just wanted to mention. Um, something else I was thinking about. I've just been real bummed lately when I found out about Gary and uh, Dave Natal. We're all going to die. I'm going to die. I got more crap wrong with me than a used car. But it's like, I don't care. We're all going to die anyways. If it's sooner than later, oh well, you know. The only thing that matters to me is somebody take care of my babies here. You know, I, that's all that I care about. I don't care about anything else. You know, these guys are my kids. I love them more than anything in this world. 
and I just pray that if something happens to me, some you know somebody will rescue these guys and take care of them like I do. And I mean, I spend big bucks on these guys. Between food, treats, and vet visits, I could have a hell of a lot more models. <laughs> but uh, that's the way I see things. But it still really bummed me out about Gary. I never met him in person, but I talked to him on the phone and email. And he was a really, really nice guy. Uh, really cordial, really nice. And... Um, I had sent him my 76 LTL 9000 that I mastered. I didn't send him the master. Look at all that dust. I didn't send him the master. I sent him a perfect copy. And it. I don't care if I don't get it back. It's not a big deal. But what he was doing the last time I talked with him on these trucks, the air filter's under the hood, and they draw the air in on the sides of the hood, on those screens. And I opted to go with decals, because at the time I made this, I didn't have anybody that could do photo etch for me. Gary was trying to have these screens done in photo etch. And, uh, oh God, I'm so bad with names. One of the guys on here was going to make them, I, I forget his name, but, uh, that just bums me out, you know, I, cause it, it was for you guys, you know, I've got mine, I ain't worried about it, but the whole reason I do this stuff is for you guys, I, I want you guys to have something nice to build, you know. This is one of my most favorite trucks, and I had to do it. I extended the cab. Uh, the hood is extensively modified. It may not look like it, but it's extended. All this is scratch built down here. The top of the hood has the correct, there is the interior. The top of the hood has the correct single line instead of the uh, kind of a pointed thing that's on the AMT Ford, I sanded that off, put a strip of plastic, and beveled it down exactly like the real truck. If y'all are wondering what's up with the grill, I sanded off the grill so that the shell, the, the egg crate insert, could all be chrome-plated or whatever, and then put on. It just makes it easier than having to tape it off. I just, you know, while I'm at it, let me do that. So you have your chrome grill, chrome headlights. Um, I included chrome, the correct chrome hood latches. I've got those. I made uh, the correct door handles. If you look, there's a hole. And I made the correct uh, push button door handles that Ford used. And they go into that hole. I put a pin on the back so they slide into that hole so it's not hard to locate them. Whenever you have something like that, guys, this is what I recommend. Put it on there. Hold it in place. Put your glue on the inside. That way you don't accidentally get glue on your nice paint job. I had those decals made. And what those were was Ford's uh, way of making your truck yours. It's the owner-operator badge, and it has three initials, which are the driver's initials. And I put that on, I put it, yeah, I put it on both sides. I need to finish this. I got real aluminum split rims for it that Doug made, and it'll be a beautiful build when it's done. If I can just, you know, get back into the dang habit or building mood. I'm in it right now, but I don't know. I just, I don't know. Just some things, you know, I got surgery coming up and all kinds of crap. Um, here's another one. Y'all saw that 
post I made of that 3D printed Ford. Uh, that was like a two-way street for me. I was really happy for you guys, but at the same time, I was like, oh, crap. Somebody's going to come out with a cab nicer than mine before I have a chance to release mine, you know? The one you saw, though, is the older version of this cab. Um, it's the one with the square grill. Mine has the diamond-shaped grill. And what's unique about mine, <clears throat> mine has a full interior. And I went to great lengths, guys, to make this as accurate as possible. As you can see, I've put the sleeper vents, which are on the doors, and the sleeper. On the real truck, on the back wall, it has the names of famous mountain passes. And I was lucky enough to have a really good friend make that for me in photo etch. You can actually feel the letters, just like the real thing. They stick out. And I added these two strips like the real one has. And... Ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. <clears throat> gotta be careful, one of my sleeper vents fell off. All I gotta do to finish this whole thing is scribe some lines. I probably did it already, my mind's so gone. If you look on the sides, I scribed all the lines like the real one has for the interior here. And I think I need to do it on this side. I think I'm lacking. Or I may have done it. It's it's a double, I don't know if you can see it, but it's, it's a double line. So it's kind of tricky to get it perfect. And then this is the... Uh, the latch, gosh darn it, the latch cover for the door. That's really how it is on the real truck. So when somebody casts this, in my opinion, I'm not, here again, I'm not the greatest in the world. This is the most accurate Ford cab that has ever been made. And that was my goal. <clears throat> I made these special. The vents with the gaskets. I added brass strip for the gutter. Goes down the front. You see it, it's kind of an L shape. The back has been redone. This has been narrowed and scooted over like the real thing. Uh sleeper doors have been rounded like the real thing I've got the correct door handles which are the same as my conventional uh, I added the front vents from a Peterbilt again like the real thing I machined headlight buckets from aluminum that's it kicked down on the floor that's what I like uh, machined aluminum headlight buckets, which will be in resin, you know, if you guys get it, but I wanted to get the perfect shape, so I machined them on my lathe, and they fit perfect, man, it came out great, but I love this little guy, and I'm hoping maybe Dave, uh, Carey, hey, that's not yours, I'm hoping Dave Carey will want to cast this, because Dave makes really nice stuff. He's a good caster. If y'all have this little guy, you know what I mean. Look at that. Uh, that is a beautiful casting. Just glass smooth. You know, you don't see any of the body work. This is the work of a master. This is the work of somebody that really knows what they're doing. You know, when you can get the casting smooth. I didn't clean anything up on this. This is how I got it. I mean, it looks like I pulled it out of a kit box. I was really amazed. And uh, Dave has a Ford van. The extended Ford van that I want so bad. So 
everybody that sees this video, go and tell Dave you want one of those vans so that he'll cast them and I can get mine too. But soon, guys, looking at it, I can send it to be cast right now. Um, I've got the grill done, which I'm kind of not happy with it because I made it so thin, it's got a bit of a warp to it. But that can be straightened before casting. I was thinking about going on the back and putting some very fine bars of brass that when you look at from the front, you wouldn't see them. But they would be cast integral with the grill and it would make it stronger. I'll probably do that before I let it be cast. But that's my Ford. I saw how, how much everybody loved the Ford. Here's something else I did. On the resin cab that's available, this right here is all wrong. Big time. If you look at the real truck, the one that's available it goes too far forward and drops down too straight. If you look at mine, you see how I added the lip and it goes all the way around the front. Well, it stops right here. That's how the real one is. It's got an inset for the step right there. Like that. I carved in the blinker recesses on both sides. So this thing will be just a kick butt build. You know. Now I'm looking at him like, Dave, you need to cast this. But look, it's got a hair on it. That won't be cast with it. It's probably from this guy right here. Right, Bigga? Bigga likes to help. He provides the real hair that goes in the real trucks. Right, buddy? So, let me get this going, guys. And I'll get it out there. Uh, I'm going to feel bad if something happens to me. And I can't build anymore. And then you guys miss out on this. That would suck. Because i got a lot of time in this thing. But uh, let me get with Dave and see if he wants to cast it. And let me get it off to him and see what he thinks. And, you know, maybe we can all build a Ford. You know, I'm not a Ford guy. I'm a Chevy guy. I got to drive a Chevy pickup. But for some reason, I love these old Ford rigs. Got the lines on top. On the Oh, that's nice. Well, got to glue that back on. There's one of my gutters. <laughs> Show you that they're a separate piece. Well, it is now. No biggie. Check this out. There's something else I wanted to tell you guys about. Doesn't that look like the insulation on the bottom of a cab? What this is? Toolbox drawer liner. If you were to take this and put bare metal foil over it, and then cut it out and put it on the bottom of your interior. It would look exactly like the insulation that's under a real cab. It's really thin foam. You know, I can press it in. But I wanted to have the grain on the bottom. It did two things. I hid all my bodywork with it. And it provides the correct detail of... The insulation blanket. <clears throat> Something else that the real truck has underneath it, it has two air tanks right here. So that's something else you guys get to add to make it more real. Where are you going, Bigga? So I'm going to get this puppy sent off. I'm tired of looking at it. You guys need to have access to it. And I don't make money on this stuff, guys. I never want money. I'd like a few copies. That would make me happy. And I'd like my master back. Um, but that's all I look for. What makes me happy is seeing my parts on your builds. That makes me happier than you guys will ever know. I keep seeing, you know, you guys with all these just really, really nice builds. And they have my wheels on them. And man, that makes me feel so good. I think that's just the coolest thing. A lot of you don't even know it, but you're using my parts. Uh, I've made a lot of parts for different people. You know, Doug Wagner, Jamie, Rommler, 
I've made a lot of parts and I've given it to them to allow them to cast and give to you guys. And uh, the way I see it is, why make something really nice just for yourself? If you can make it and you can uh, make a copy of it easily, let's do that, you know? So I got to end this video. It's getting kind of long. Thank you guys for watching my videos. Um, you know, it makes me happy that I didn't do it for nothing. Like I said, I'm going to get these floors out so you guys can have one to build. I know there's a lot of Ford guys out there that would probably really like to get their hands on them. And to my knowledge, other than the cab over, I'm the only one that's ever done it. Nobody's ever done the 76 LTL. I'm the only one that's done that. Somebody else has done the WT9000 Blue Mule um, cab over. But, boy, it lacks a lot. It, it, they did a nice job, but it's really inaccurate. And I don't say that from a snobby point of view. I say it from, it's a shame that they went to all that trouble, but it's not correct. It's like, to me, it's like taking a GMC cab over and putting a Ford badge on the front and saying it's a WT9000. Well, it's not. This is wrong, and this is wrong, and this is wrong, and this is wrong. <laughs> so, you know, that's my outlook on this stuff. Try to make it the best you can, you know, especially if you're going to offer it to the masses. Try to make it the best you can so that, you know, everybody ends up with an almost perfect model, you know. So, uh, let me end this. I might make another video. I get a lot, of, a lot of guys saying that they like my videos and I need to make more. And I finally got around today where I didn't have to mail packages or pack things or, you know, feel like crap or whatever. So I figured, what the hell. Plus, I had a big 24-ounce coffee and a Sprite. So I'm like, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> But, uh, again, you know. Oh, one more thing. Check this out, guys. Not a lot of people know about this. Oh, I don't remember if I got this from Danbury Mint. Or Franklin Mint. <clears throat> but it's a solid. The tracks don't move. They're flat on the bottom. Because it's not made to be like a model. It's a clock. <laughs> and I got it just how detailed it is. It's really nice. And you probably have a hard time finding this now. Super nice. The only bad thing is it's really heavy. But the blade moves. Um, the clock does come off. The bad thing is part of the roll bar comes with it. The ROPS. Rollover protection system. And it's empty. Anybody with half a bit of skill could go in here and carve this out. It might even be a separate piece carve that out and make it, you know, finish the bulldozer. But I just think it's kind of cool as a clock. So I leave it and I just display it with the clock facing in. And the clock is magnetized. It snaps on. That's pretty cool. But it's 124 scale. You could use it as a load but one thing you guys need to do, <clears throat> if you're going to put something heavy on a plastic low boy trailer, get you some clear plexiglass rod and glue it to the bottom of the trailer where it touches the ground. So the trailer can't sag. It's sitting on, basically, the surface you have it on. That way, if you put something heavy on it, it's not going to sag the bed or break your trailer in half. <clears throat> and they're clear, so if you look under it, you really don't see it unless you look closely. Alright, guys. I run out of crap to talk about. Uh, 
let me upload this and name it and if I think of something else I'll make another video take care see ya